How's it going, everyone? Stefan here. Um, so today we are going to be going over um, the derivation of the mat of a mass balance um, for a dye filtration step during TFF. Um, so, you know, here I have a, a drawing of your TFF system, how it may look during dye filtration. We have our retentate vessel, as always, that has some mass of your solute in it. Um, that's M, your concentration of that solute, C, and then the liquid density, rho. Um, we have a pump that draws the liquid from the retentate vessel and pushes it over the, the filter that has area A. Um, the, uh, this valve adds back pressure, which causes the driving force uh, across the membrane. Um, so some of the um, solution passes through into the permeate. The permeate has a flow rate QP, concentration of your solute CP, and a density associated with it. Um, and what doesn't pass through the, to the permeate, of course, goes back into the retentate vessel. Um, so what's different here, uh, you know, you may have watched the concentration um, mass balance derivation. So now we have buffer that's being added in to the retentate vessel at a, a rate QD, and it has some density rho. Um, and, you know, well, I, I guess we'll get to this again, but a, a key thing here is that this Q... D, your dye filtration flow rate is equal to QP. So this liquid level is constant. That liquid level there is constant, um, not changing. Whereas in the concentration uh, mass balance, you know, that that liquid level is, is going down during the operation. Okay. So um, just like we did in the concentration, uh, mass balance derivation, we'll, we'll draw, we'll start with drawing a boundary around our uh, system. And then we'll, you know, we'll notice we have, okay, we have buffer, we have a line going into the system, the buffer over here. Um, and then we also have a line leaving for the permeate. So we'll go to our mass balance expression where I have the generation term that could also be like a consumption term. Um, and then in minus out equal to the uh, accumulation or like mass in the system over time. Um, you know, so based off this, we see, okay, there's no generation. That's going to be zero. And there is an in term. That's the buffer line over here. So we're going to leave that one. And then there's also an out term, the permeate. So we're going to leave that one. And then, of course, we're interested in what the mass looks like over time, the, the accumulation term. Um, OK, so we can now get started. Um, and I'll, I'll just say, uh, if you did watch the concentration um, derivation video, it's it's this is going to be very similar. Um, obviously, our end result is different. But um, yeah, OK, so our in our, it, let's start actually with writing a, a uh, we'll do a, the total, total mass balance on the system. Okay. Total mass balance. So our in, actually, let's start by doing this. The mass the mass in the system this is going to be equal to uh, the density times the change in volume of the system. Okay. And then that's going to be equal to what, what are we adding in? Well, the, the dye filtration is coming in. So that's its density times QD, its flow rate, and then minus what's leaving the density times the permeate flow rate QP. Um, and again, we're going to say that these dense, we're going to assume that the densities are all the same, uh, fair assumption to make. 
So these, these density terms are going to go away. And then, um, you know, you may have caught this earlier. Well, I was saying that QP equals QD. So that means that the volume change over time, this is equal to zero when QD equals QP. And I guess, yeah, I, I wrote that over here. So that's that's a key part of, of dye filtration, QD equals QP. Okay, so now um, we'll write our, the solute, the solute mass balance, MBAL, solute mass balance. And um, that can be written as the mass of your solute I over time. <clears throat> That's going to be equal to um, your, so we can write the mass, which is concentration times the volume over time. And then that's equal to um, the amount of your solute in the permeate times the permeate flow right there. And then, um, you know, we can write that the sieving, this has come up in some other videos, the sieving is equal to CP over C. C, this is your, your retentate concentration, but I'm just writing the retentate concentration as C for these videos. So we'll just leave it like that. Rearrange this to say that CP is equal to the sieving coefficient times C, and then we can plug that in over here. And we'll rewrite DCV over DT is equal to minus S C the sieving times the concentration times the permeate flow rate. Okay, um, and now, um, you know, we're actually all good to, to, sol to uh, solve this equation here. We don't actually need the total mass balance up here because it's equal to zero. So yeah, we're, we're um, all set to continue on now. So first thing we're going to do is, um, well, I guess we'll do two things at once. So I'm going to bring the DT over here, and then I'm also going to, um, I'm always forgetting what this is called, write out the, the um, differentiation here, uh, the, the product rule. So. Um, I'm going to do both those at once. We're going to have C times DV. And actually, I'm going to keep the DT over here for now. DV plus V times the change in concentration over time is equal to our minus sieving times the coefficient or times the concentration times the flow rate and actually i think i misspoke um our total mass balance that we we looked at above that said dv dt is zero right that, that was this dv dt is zero when qd equals qp which it does for um dye filtration usually write DF. So we do need our total mass balance. It says that this is equal to zero. And then we can write V DC DT is equal to S sieving times the concentration times the permeate flow rate. Now we'll get ready for integration. I'm gonna bring the C over here and the DT 
over here and do that. So we're going to have DC, DT. is equal to minus s, I forgot my v, minus s qp dt. Okay, so now we're ready to start, we're ready to do the integration. Oops, I have my dt over here, let me get rid of this. DC over C, right? This looks good. So I brought my C down. I brought my DT over. I have V DC over C is equal to minus the sieving coefficient times the permeate flow rate times DT. Okay, so now, now we can do our integration here. This is going to go from C naught to the C final. We'll call just C. And this integration is from time zero to the time that we end die filtration. Um, on the left side, you know, the integral of one over um, C is going to be the natural log, natural log. And I'm just going to write it as a, if I've already, um, you know, evaluated at the bounds. Natural log of C over C naught is equal to minus the sieving coefficient times QP. And then the integral of DT is just going to be T. Okay. Um, and now this is pretty much your solution. We're just going to do some uh, algebra to, to rearrange things. Um, yeah, so they, they're in a form that's that's commonly seen. So, okay. So something to, to um, you know, note is that your permeate flow rate times time is going to give you your permeate volume your total permeate volume. So we can, uh, you know, plug that in here. Um, and I'll also at the same time, bring our, our volume or tank volume over uh, to, the, to the right side. And so you'll see that here, we have natural log of C over C naught is equal to minus S and then VP over V, the retentate volume. And another definition, VP over V is equal to N, the number of dye volumes. So this is the definition of dye volumes. You'll see this N um, for dye volumes pop up uh, in the world of TFF. And it's just, you know, it's essentially saying like the number of exchanges of your retentate volume. So if your permeate volume collected uh, is equal to the retentate volume, n is equal to one, you've done one die volume, and so on, um, or like one full exchange um, of the, the, the buffer. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll rewrite that. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to exponentiate. So we're going to have c over c naught is equal to, um, I'm going to write the exponential like this, exp, and that's minus s times the number of die volumes. And this is your solution. You'll often see it written this way. Um, you know, obviously you can bring the c naught over, but yeah. Um, you know, this expression here will predict the concentration of your solute um, over the course of dye filtration. So, you know, as we talked about in like the, the sieving video, if you've watched that, if if sieving is, is zero, you have no passage um, of your, your solute of interest across the filter. Well, taking like the uh, exponential of, of uh, zero is equal to one. So C over C naught is equal to one. There's no change in your concentration, which, you know, we, we saw that in, um, uh, yeah, this, the sieving video where um, if we had, 
you know, permeate volume over the course of a run. And then this was your solute. Um, when sieving was, or during a concentration step, we saw that the concentration increased. And then when you did dye filtration, it stayed flat. And then if you started concentrating again, it would increase. That was sieving equal to zero. And this expression we just solved for, um, that would describe this flat line part. But now if you have sieving equal to one, um, you know, this, this here during a concentration step, it would stay flat. You start dye filtration, it would decay quickly. And then when you start concentrating and it stays flat. And of course your sieving could be in between these two um, you know, you could, you could have any sieving anywhere between zero and one. So let's just, you know, say, um, let me rewrite that. We're going to have the sieving is greater than zero, but it's less than one. You know, that intermediate situation, you might see it increase a little bit and then start decreasing during dye filtration. And then you start concentrating again and it starts going back up. Um, and just to, to reiterate that this expression will describe the concentration for, that's terrible, for these dye filtration steps. I'm just gonna, you know, point. So like from here to here and from here to here, or like there to, I don't know where dye filtration stops here, we'll call it there. Um, but yeah, so it's describing that middle part of the, the curve. Um, yeah, so ho hopefully this was helpful and, and, uh, you, you know, now understand where this expression comes from. If you've seen it before, it's a good little exercise to refresh your algebra and your, um, I guess, basic calculus. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.